G'day folks and welcome to part three of the basic introduction to aquaponics video series. Now in today's presentation we're going to start off by looking at three different plant growing techniques commonly used in aquaponics and also in hydroponics as it is. And then from there we're going to move on over to the air systems needed to keep both the fish and the plants happy depending on how you're growing in your system. And then we're going to move on to all things fish including the best species for you to grow out, how many you can safely grow in your beginner's backyard system and then we'll finish off with a look at the different veggies and some spice that you can grow in your own DIY backyard aquaponic systems to help feed your friends and family. So with the introduction out of the way let's get cracking and look at three commonly used grow bed systems. Slide and drain grow beds. These are one of the things that help the system run. Basically helps get a lot of oxygen into the bed for the plant roots, the biota, the bacteria, all the other life forms that you have there in the grow beds. I like to use a bell siphon. I don't know why I've never really had the hassles with it. Some other people have had. If you are interested in are having hassles with bell siphons, I actually have a 101 which shows you how to make them. And it also includes troubleshooting guides for the most common mistakes. And they are very basic and easy to fix. Another common siphon you'll see around the place is a loop siphon. I generally don't use these because the inlet is hidden by media, very hard to clean out roots and issues like that, unless you have a dedicated opening, such as like you have here with a bell siphon and I figure. Well, a bell siphon is easy to uh, operate. It doesn't run into hassles with people moving the hose or other things occurring on the outside. So that's why I prefer them. I use siphons. They work, work fine. I had one, hassles with them after a while. They weren't initiating as well. I did find they were a little bit slower to drain. Not that that really matters, as long as you've got a decent flow rate going through the bed. So that's why I pretty much all stuck with the bell siphons. But yep, these siphons work. A little bit hard to retrofit into existing bell siphon setups though. And the other way people irrigate their beds is via flooding and draining using timers. So you basically got a standpipe that overflows while the water is on. The timer goes off and you've got this little hole down the base here in the standpipe and you can see the water exiting down the bottom there that basically over time will just drain the grow bed down. Generally speaking, 15 minute on, 35 minute off is what I found worked for my flow rate. Keeping in mind though, you do need the entire volume of the fish tank in water. Say if it's a 265 gallons or a thousand liter IBC, that needs to pass through the biofiltration, meaning your grow beds at least once an hour. Sorry, Bianca, I'm in the talk. And yeah, so that needs to go through to uh, process the waste from the fish at least once an hour. If you are flooding and draining using a timer, make sure you do have that flow rate go through the grow beds to make sure that waste is processed. The right grow bed media. The best media to use in aquaponics is inert media, something that doesn't fluctuate pH. So you've got your expanded clay like I like to use. Blue metal or, or uh, basalt is a common road base, is a common rock here in Australia. You can get fairly cheaply. That works really well, a lot heavier than the clay or the other alternative, which is scoria or volcanic rock or expanded shale. Both of those or these three here are light, the clay, the uh, scoria, volcanic rock and the expanded shale. The blue metal and the river rocks that a lot of people use, they're rather heavy. So when you're designing your system, if you are going to use them, make sure you've got decent puddings so they can take the weight if you're just setting up out on the grass. A simple uh, test as well, if you are testing the rock to see if it is suitable, pop it in some vinegar. Vinegar is acidic. If there's any carbonate-based rock within that rock blend, it will start to give off a steady stream of bubbles. If you see that, steer clear of that rock because over time it will bring the pH of your system up to a point where it may be hard for some elements to be taken up by the plants and also cause you issues with protecting the fish against ammonia issues further on down the track, depending on how you run the system. Now, just quickly, folks, I've got some great news for you, people who are really enjoying the video series, picking up a couple of pointers and getting really curious about aquaponics. I do have an online backyard aquaponics for beginners guide available, 1995 US. It includes a lot more in-depth looks at not only how you can cycle a system, but a load of tutorials on building components like bell siphons, solids filters, a couple of them, a small little IBC chop and flip system. Not only that, but a couple of pointers on nutrients, plant selection, and common ways to keep pests and bugs from eating your veggies just to keep it all organic. Now a big bonus with the guide is you can actually ask me questions directly and get them answered a lot faster than you would if you were to leave a question down below these videos here on YouTube. As I said the guide is 1995 US and it is available via the link down in the description and another one will appear at the end of the video as well. 
Now, just a quick heads up, I also have an online shop that includes affiliate links for you folks that would like to buy a couple of aquaponics products that I use and also sell. And while you're there, check out the fantastic Queensland Nutbuster Nutcracker, handmade right here in Australia. Great for Maccas, walnuts, hazelnuts, and all those sort of things. But that's enough of me spruiking, trying to pay the bills. Let's get back to the aquaponics. Deep water culture. Basically, you have a floating raft, the plants grow through the holes in the base of the raft into nutrient-rich water below. The basic rule of thumb I give people in the backyard is you want the water within that grow bed to flow through around about once an hour at the fastest. So a fairly slow flow rate, just so those plants have a lot of access to the nutrients within that water. In that water as well, you need a load of air. Rob from Brigalow Brook Farm, he's using infuser native venturi technology something you can find over on his channel to help irrigate it uh, using excess pump flow uh, other people will run loads of air stones down there uh, every so many square foot to get enough air in there to keep things like pythium away but also to to provide air to the plant the roots of the plants because they do require air there's air pockets in soil so we need to provide it in the water uh, the next one is the um Nutrient film technique or NFT. It is basically a film of water that washes over a channel or a rail. The roots of the plants grow down into it. The water then exits down the end and flows back into your reservoir, be it a fish tank or the sump tank of the system. And yeah, it's just a continuous cycle, not a huge flow at all. You will see people use a round stormwater pipe here and they have end caps on it and they have basically probably about a couple of inches or um, an inch and a half or 40 mil of water in the base. That's sort of technically a deep water culture. The roots are always submerged. This one here is just literally, as you can see, open end, just a film of water running down through the base. Both methods work though. Aerating the system. I like to use the little piston pumps. I have them suspended, as you can see here. Otherwise, they vibrate and make a load of noise. Otherwise, you can buy different variations of the magnetic pumps. And yeah, they just basically nice rubber feet. They shake around a little bit, make a little bit of noise. But I found these jobbies here actually quieter than these ones when they're suspended and a little bit easier to do because they provide a suspension port. Another thing for smaller systems, you can get AC DC systems. This little one here runs on. AC while the power is on has an internal switch the power goes off and goes on to some lithium batteries within the unit so you've got about I think it's three or four hours worth of air in there not great for a large or big IBC system uh, over 260 gallons a thousand liters but for some of those smaller units they work rather well for those larger units I prefer to use something that is a dedicated backup system this is a little DC jobby quite easy and legal to make if you're here in Australia we are allowed to work on the DC side of things. Uh, you just can't stuff around with the AC side. Uh, it's just made up with a, a little switch here. Uh, it's plugged into a power source. The power source keeps the switch open. As soon as the power goes off, the switch shuts and creates a circuit, as you can see here, that is set up on a couple of batteries and fires off your 12 volt pump. And there's plans on the Backyard Aquaponics Forum. That's where I got this idea. I think it's Chainsaw. He posted it. So take a screenshot of that and look it up if you're interested. Fish for the US, we have our bluegill or sunfish. I think they're the same family. Tilapia. Your trout and your carp may not be, which is your koi and your goldfish, may not be legal in all states of America, same as here in Australia. So look into that before you just rush out and get them. Tilapia, great for the warm weather. Catfish, your channel and your bullhead, uh, they're pretty much all something that you can run in most areas from memory in the States. Then for the smaller systems, you've got your ornamentals like your goldfish, your guppies, your koi. Rainbow trout are a good choice for cooler areas. And there's a, there's a commercial place that's actually running salmon in the northeast from memory of the States. So there's loads. I mean, this is just a selection. There's loads of fish you can run. It just depends on whether you want something to chew on or whether you want something just ornamental wise in a smaller system or you prefer not to partake of the flesh. In Australia, we got things like our go-to silver perch. They're good for the cooler and the warmer areas. Jade perch, they're what I run, the Baku grunters. They're good for warmer climates. Then you've got your Asian sea bass or barramundi, which I think some places run in the States as well, commercially. A few places run jades actually over there commercially as well. Barrow works really well in North Queensland where it's nice and warm, cooler states. You need heating, otherwise they die under 18 degrees Celsius, which is something Fahrenheit. On the, oh, we also have other, uh, other natives like the eel-tailed catfish or tandanus tandanus. 
Then we have our introduced species like redfin, illegal in New South Wales to keep these guys. They're a European perch, but they are legal in Victoria from memory. Uh, rainbow trout, again, as long as go- as well as gold, golden trout and brown trout, I think, are viable here in Australia. People also use bass as well. And I think a few people use bass in the States. And again, your ornamentals like koi, not legal in all states, illegal here in Queensland. And your other carp and uh, your goldfish and your um, guppies and things like that. How many fish in your system? I'll run through this really quick because we're running out of time. Uh, basically, what you need to do is work out the total volume of your grow bed. This is just basically a rule of thumb for you beginners starting out in aquaponics. can be tweaked down the line. There'll be a couple of people screaming in their chairs now saying, oh, you can have more. But anyway, this is the way I like to do it so you don't lose your fish. Uh, Allow for an inch or 25 mil from the top of your grow bed and 25 mil or an inch of dry media on top of your wet media to stop algal growth. And once you take off that amount from the height of the bed, you then work out the volume of your grow bed by measuring your length, your breadth and your height. Then you use that calculation to work out your volume. Then you work out that volume either in litres or in gallons by 25 litres per fish if you're working litres or 6.6 gallons if you're working in gallons. And that will give you the amount of media that you need to have a large enough bacterial colony to process the feed given to a fish at 500 grams into nitrate so you're not going to end up with any issues poisoning your fish down the line there are caveats in that uh, but uh, if you're starting out and you follow those guidelines you're not going to have a problem whatsoever just keeping in mind that you're looking at 500 grams of fish so even if it's a fingerling and it grows up to 500 grams that fingerling you take it as being 500 grams because down the line That's how big it's going to be. The fingerlings, you can purchase them from a hatchery, catching them from the wild where legal. Some places it is legal to do that. Get excess fingerlings from friend systems. If you're um, lucky enough to grow things like carp and tilapia, a lot of people find that they will reproduce within the systems by themselves. So you might have mates into aquaponics who may have some that they can share around with you. When you do get new fish, if you're adding them into an established system with fish in it already, put them in quarantine first, just with their own water just in case they do have some sort of disease or some sort of issue so they don't spread it to the other fish likewise if you are adding fish even into a brand new system and they're small add them into a little nursery area because you don't want them being sucked up through the pump if you have a pump in the system or taken out through your drain work and delivered into a grow bed they don't like living in grow beds i can tell you that. Put them in some sort of isolation tank. Uh, What you can see here on the right is basically a laundry basket with fly netting on the inside. I probably should have had a few holes in the bottom as well because I did have a few solids build up and down in there, but that's enough to keep them isolated within there till they're a large enough size so they don't get sucked up and out through your drain work. Uh, Just quickly with feeding the fish, I like to to use a satiation method. So basically you weigh out a given amount of fish feed, you put it in there with the fish, you basically wait until they stop eating it and just adding a little bit at a time towards the end. And then you weigh what's left over and subtract that from their original amount. And that's pretty much all. If you can work out how much that is in a cup measurement or whatever, just makes feeding the fish a lot easier. If you do it over a series of days, it gives you an average to work out on. And every month or two, if you notice they're smashing through the food really fast, um, just do the same procedure again, weigh it out, uh, work out what a bit of a basic amount is, and then just throw it in. It just makes feeding the fish a lot easier. And you know the fish are getting enough nutrients to support the plant life on the hydroponic side of the system. Types of plants for aquaponics, the go-to are the greens, the lettuces, things like cancong, your basils, your chards, onion greens, things like that. They absolutely thrive on just the basic nutrient load of an aquaponic system. Things like tomatoes, pruning plants, they work really well too. You may need to supplement with a little bit of extra potassium just to help with the the fruit formation and the general health of the plant because they are a little bit more nutrient demanding, the uh, fruiting plants. Down here, you can see that we've got a bit of a combination of a few. We've got our greens, our beets down the bottom. We've got a uh, brassia going to flower there. And we've got some snow peas up the back there. And they all do phenomenally well in an aquaponic system. And you can grow things as well, like carrots. Uh, Carrots work Fairly well, I've found, if you grow the shorter varieties, not the longs. And you can even grow your rooting crops. But we grew a fantastic crop of potatoes, some of the best I've ever grown in a dual root zone style. Um, As you can see, I've got a pouch in the background there sitting in some clay balls. 
and I had a soil blend in there with certain rock mineral elements and I had the hydroponic or aquaponic water delivered hydroponically to the base and was wicking up through a sand layer and grew awesome um, ginger, as you can see there, and also a great uh, crop of spud. So I'm pretty much all sold on that method and I'll be exploring it a lot more down the line. And that is pretty much all it. So that about wraps it up for this introduction to aquaponics series and I hope it's helped you folks out that have been wanting to build your own aquaponics system and didn't know if it would be the right thing for you or even, you know, know where to start. Now don't forget that I do have that very helpful Backyard Aquaponics for Beginners online guide available. It's only $19.95 and it's well suited for you folks who have, yeah, decided that you want to have a crack at building your own backyard aquaponics system. It's got a load of tutorials in there and helpful troubleshooting bits and pieces as well. Now, I really do need to thank you folks who have been watching us for years here on YouTube and you've pretty much all seen a lot of this content over and over in different guises and different forms on the videos. So, I've, you know, thanks for sticking by us, folks. I really do enjoy chatting to you down in the comments section and the friendships that we've made over this 10 plus years now. It's been an absolute ball. So anyway, that is enough of me rabbiting on. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and YouTube will give you a notification next time I upload an aquaponics video to this channel. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own aquaponics systems and gardens are booming and I'll catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.